Ayas Barican in Sacramento. My name is Katie Ball and I'm the Special Projects Associate at the Sacramento Public Library. We're so excited to have you here and we're going to get to Ileana very soon, I promise. But first I have some things I'd like to share. So today's program is funded through an award from the Network of the National Library of Medicine, a partner of the All of Us Research Program. What is the All of Us Research Program? It's a large research program from the National Institutes of Health. The goal is to help researchers understand more about why people get sick or stay healthy. We hope that more than 1 million people will join the All of Us Research Program. People who join will share information about their health, habits, and what it's like where they live. By looking for patterns in this information, researchers may learn more about what affects people's health. The All of Us Research Program will last for 10 years or more. This will allow researchers to study health over time. If you decide to join the All of Us Research Program, you will be contributing to an effort to improve the health of generations to come. You may also learn about your own health. To learn more about the All of Us Research Program, visit joinallofus.org SPL. And one of the great services of the National Library of Medicine, or NLM, that I'd like to share with you is called Medline Plus. Medline Plus is an online health information resource for patients and their families and friends. Medline Plus offers information on health topics, human genetics, medical tests, medications, dietary supplements, and healthy recipes. Medline Plus is available entirely in English and Spanish, including navigation and menus. Other languages are available for select health topics linked from the health topics pages. And there's reasons, so many reasons to love Medline Plus. There's lots of great resources and it's all in one website. There's no ads or endorsements. Sources are cited and it's printer friendly. And personally, I've used Medline Plus to look up information for myself and my family, and it's really helpful and easy to understand, so I encourage you to check it out for yourself. And we're glad that you've joined us for the first in the Building Confidence in the Kitchen series. We'll be hosting two more sessions with Ileana on February 7th and March 6th, if you'd like to learn how to make more dishes from Diasporican. And anyone in the Sacramento area who participates in these virtual sessions can receive a complimentary copy of the cookbook. And I do have some available. So if you have not requested one, please email me with a Sacramento Public Library location nearest to you, and I will get one sent out to you. And if you already have a copy, please note that it is yours to keep and does not need to be returned to the library. And mark your calendars for March 13th. Ileana Maisonette will be our featured speaker at Enters the Chat at the Central Library in downtown Sacramento. We hope to see you there. And we do have a landing page for all things Ileana on our website under the Events tab. And I will make sure to share with this with you following today's event. And if you'd like to learn more about Ileana and see what she's up to, you can visit her website and follow her on, her on Instagram at Eat Gorda Eat. All right, now for some housekeeping. Uh, we're doing this in a webinar format, so all participant microphones and video have been disabled. If you have any questions, please submit them using the Q&A button that you'll find at the bottom of your screen. Ileana will be addressing questions throughout the program and we'll do our best to address all of them that come in. If you need closed captioning at any point, please click the live transcript button at the bottom of your screen. You'll click that button, wait just a moment, and then you'll see the closed captioning pop up and you can follow along. If you're having any audio related issues, please exit and re-enter. We find that doing that will typically solve that issue. And we ask for grace and understanding in this virtual world that we are in right now. If there is some kind of a delay, one of the hosts drops off, or we experience any other type of interruption, please allow time for us to pick up and resume the program. And finally, I wanted to share some follow-up. This program is being recorded and will be shared to our YouTube channel within the week. And keep an eye out for an email from me. It will have a link to the recording, more information about upcoming programs featuring Diaspora Again, and a participation survey. Please share your thoughts and feedback with us. We appreciate hearing from you. So let me go ahead and stop sharing that. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce James Beard award-winning writer and Sacramento native Ileana Maisonette. So Ileana, take it away and everyone please enjoy. Our cookie? <laughs> All right. 
Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get right into it because we only have like an hour and a half and we're technically going to do three recipes, all of which are necessary for this dish. I'm gonna start with the sofrito and news flash. If you're gonna take the next two classes, you absolutely need the sofrito base. So if you're here, I hope that you do join the next two classes because you already have this made. So let's go ahead and get started. So I have my blender here, which you probably cannot see. Here it is. Beep, boop, beep, boop. Okay, I'm gonna put cilantro. If you went on the library website to see and put the cilantro straight into the blender, to see which ingredients that we use, you might've noticed that the ingredients listed cilantro and culantro, which is also known as recao. Um, it's kind of a hard ingredient to find. So the sofrito that we make here in the States has already kind of substituted the cilantro for culantro. So if it's something that you can't find, it's basically optional at this point. Don't feel bad about not having it. Put that cilantro in the blender. I'm gonna cut this green bell pepper. Um, so traditionally in Puerto Rico, they use a sweet bell pepper called ají dulces, which are incredibly hard, de, I say impossible to find um, here um, in the States. So I just use green bell pepper, but lots of other people use different peppers like in the summertime when peppers are plentiful. I will use a combination of um, whatever peppers they have, banana peppers, gypsy peppers, purple peppers, red peppers, whatever that they have that looks good to me, I will use to kind of create that um, almost sweet flavor that ahi dulces have. But in the meantime, since it's winter, I'm just gonna go ahead and use regular green bell peppers in the blender. Um, You know, you can do rough chop. It's all getting blitzed anyway, so it's not like super important. Tomatoes are a little bit of a controversial ingredient. Lots of people do not use tomatoes. I do. Um, lots of people use water in their sofrito. I do not. I just, what's the point of, you, of adding water when you can use tomatoes, which will give you kind of like, I don't know, more of a flavorful liquid, I guess. So I'm gonna go ahead and blitz this a little bit just to, I don't know, get it going. I've only put, so far, I've only put cilantro, bell pepper, and tomatoes in the blender. Here we go. Of course, I'm going to go ahead and knock these down with a spatula, get them into the blade. Here we go. All right, I'm going to add the remaining of my first time I actually get a stack. Now, depending on how you like your sofrito, I'm using a blender, but you could also use a food processor. I like mine a little more on the chunky side. I don't like mine too smooth because, I don't know, I just find that if you, if you blend it too smooth, I like to see the green flecks of the cilantro in my cooking. The chunkier that I leave it, that's that gross. The chunkier that I leave it, the more likely I am to see like the flecks of green and red in my final dish, which I just find to be um, aesthetically pleasing. I'm gonna put the rest of my tomatoes. I use two Roma tomatoes. One bunch of cilantro. I'm gonna use, I might only use half of them. Let's see, half of a yellow onion. If you want to use um, white onion, you could. I use one, like one medium green bell pepper. So let's say you're like not a fan of bell peppers. You could 
technically leave it out. But I wouldn't. Let's say you're one of those people that hates the flavor of cilantro or you're very sensitive to the flavor of cilantro. I would say that once you combine it, okay, it's actually it's unfair for me to say because I'm not sensitive to the flavor, but I personally find that once you combine it with the onions, the garlic, the tomatoes, and the bell peppers, that it's not such a prevalent um, flavor. Okay, I'm gonna use let's see how many one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna use seven cloves of garlic. If you want to use um two cloves of garlic, you can. If you want to use 12 cloves of garlic, you can. Actually, that would be awesome. If I wasn't leaving, I probably would have. Take full of it myself. All right, we're gonna put it. So we put in the garlic. We have everything in there. I'm only gonna use that half onion just because the onion was so big. And now I'm gonna blitz. All right, I'm going to check the texture. I'm going to check to see what the texture is like. Hmm. You know what? I think we can give it another blitz. Why not? What's the worst that could happen? All right, one more time for the cheap seats in the back. <laughs> Right, we are done and done with the sofrito. So whatever sofrito we are not gonna use for the recipe tonight, what you can do is um, you can put it in the refrigerator. It'll last in the refrigerator maybe like five days. I wouldn't go any longer. But what I always absolutely do is pour this in an ice cube tray. That's reserved for sofrito. I don't use the ice cube tray that I'm gonna use for my cocktail ice later on the weekend. I have one ice cube tray that I use for the sofrito. It's a standard ice cube tray. You pour it straight into the ice cube tray. I usually wrap it in a food safe plastic film, a layer of foil, which is optional, you don't really have to do. And I put it in my freezer and it'll last up to a year. All right, I'm gonna get this out of the way and we are gonna start cooking. And Ileana, if I could interrupt you for a second, I've gotten some questions around culantro. Mm -hmm. um, someone shared that they were able to find some at the Shun Fat Supermarket in Southland Park. So they wanted to share that. Okay. Um, if there's any other places uh, in the area or just in general that you know of, um, we had other people asking where to get it. Um, and someone also asked, if you can't find uh, culantro, can you use two bunches of cilantro? You don't need to use two bunches of cilantro. You could only use one is fine. Um, so one is like totally fine because they have different kind of, um, flavor profiles, you're not really using one kind of in place of the other. It's kind of like 
either or type of scenario, you know? Um, I mean, for me, I kind of go hard on it anyway, so I will use both together, but you don't need to use one in place um, of the other. Uh, I don't actually know where else where you would be able to get it um, in SAC. Sorry. <laughs> I actually don't know where you'd be able to get it in SAC. Does that answer the question? It does, thank you. And I'll pop that, um, the store that the person shared in the chat so everyone can see. Okay, great. Um, I'm gonna get my, this is like a 10 inch skillet. So we're gonna get ready to cook the um, pollo guisao. So, I'm getting it started on high heat. If you don't feel comfortable doing it, you can just get it going like at a medium high, but I usually cook everything on a high heat. I'm gonna get a little 50-50 oil. This is um, half virgin olive, half olive oil, half um, vegetable oil. You can get it at restaurant supply. Or actually, you can just make it your own. If you have a bottle of olive oil and a bottle of like canola or vegetable oil, you can mix them together yourself. Uh, here I have a pound of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. You can use breast. But you just want to be um, cautious of the overcooking because, you know, chicken breast has a tendency to dry out. So I would actually, like, kind of make the base and everything else before, um, you know, like, I would add it, the chicken breast, brown it, take it out, set it aside, make the base like I'm going to, and then add it towards the end. I'm going to salt, a little bit of pepper. I'm gonna use some adobo, some salt-free adobo, so you can go a little heavy. This is my own um, blend that I made with a uh, burlap and barrel. It's salt-free, so you can go a little heavy on it. A little sizzle. I'm gonna add the chicken thighs. I'm just gonna brown them up a little bit. Move the season on the other side. Some more adobo. I'm gonna cook this uh, maybe for like, I don't know, like a minute or two or until the chicken thighs don't stick to the pan any longer, which means they're ready to flip. I just want to get a little bit of browning in them. In the meantime, I'm going to get my um, tomato sauce. We don't have to cook this all the way through because it's going to cook in the tomato sauce bake.
All right, I'm gonna add a can of tomato sauce. This is just a no salt tomato sauce from Walmart, great value. Add a little bit of stock. Um, I usually use water, but I had stock that I needed to get rid of, so I use stock. But most of the time, I use water. You don't have to use stock. Give it a good mix. That was just um, an eight ounce can of tomato sauce. Eight ounces, so a cup. So now I'm going to add um, a little bit of sofrito. Now, normally, <sighs> sofrito would be added in the beginning with the oil to cook off a lot of the liquid, a lot of the moisture. I'm going to add, mm, for right now, I'll add like a, like a tablespoon. I do that because I find that it also cooks off a lot of the pungency of the flavor. I like to taste it, you know what I mean? Um, so I'll add a little bit at the beginning, but I'll add a little bit at the end too, just so I can taste it. You know what? I actually think I might break these chicken pieces down too in the pan. Why? I don't know, because they will probably cook faster. And why not? So instead of getting like a cutting board out <laughs> and dirty and cutting board, I'm just doing it directly in the pan. And if you've ever seen me cook this dish before, you will know that I do this often. So I'm not going to apologize for it. Yay. If you wanted to use um, bone-in chicken thighs, because they're cheaper, the boneless, skinless chicken thighs, if you want to use bone-in with the skin, that rhymes unintentionally. You totally can. The only reason, the only reason why I'm using boneless skinless is because it was on sale, and also it's faster to cook. And Ileana, someone asked, did you add the whole can of tomato sauce? Whole can. Whole can. Great. Thank you. The whole eight ounces, so a cup. I'm going to turn that down to medium. I'm going to clean this up because it's driving me crazy. Now is the time that I'm going to add my carrots. Some people, it's not really traditional, obviously, because, you know, where carrots going to be in Puerto Rican cuisine. But it's become a thing that people like to kind of stretch the dish. They'll add potatoes and carrots. We are adding potatoes to it, which I will in a minute. But I want to, I do want to add carrots, and I'm going to add that now. I'm just going to do a rough chop. Great, from my hand, 
to the pan. I don't know why I keep rhyming tonight. It's so weird. I'm cutting the carrots into like this size. And Ileana, we have another question. Um, can they also use, if they don't have the other tomato, can they use tomato paste or could they use fresh tomatoes and water? Are there any other alternatives that could be used? Um, tomato paste. Hmm. I mean, I guess so. I wouldn't really know how that works. I guess you'd use maybe like... I don't know, maybe like a little can of tomato paste and a couple of cups of water. I don't really know the ratio to that. I haven't tried. Um, fresh tomatoes, sure, because that's how the tomato sauce was made before Puerto Rican started using the can. I guess you can blend up some um, fresh tomatoes and some seasonings. You would need a lot of fresh tomatoes, though, I think, to get to eight ounces. And then once it cooks, it'll start to like, you know, kind of create that more deep flavor that's already with the can. I know that a lot of my followers um, in Australia and in Europe and the UK don't have the same type of tomato sauce that we do. So they use passata, which is essentially uncooked um, tomato sauce. You know, add a little more of the stock. And mm. then add a little bit of olive brine into splash. And I'm going to use brown olives. These are um, green. Manzanilla Spanish olives. They have the pit in them. I use the pit because that's the one that my grandma used, but also there's a big difference in texture. Um, you know, a lot of people use the green olives that have that are pitted and have the um the piece of pimento in it. I'm gonna try with this. But I find that the texture of that particular olive to be very mushy, very soft, you know, which is why I don't like to use it. But if you are somebody that's like cooking for kids or you're worried about the pit, just don't use the ones with the pit. Now wipe this down. Are there any other questions in the meantime, Kate? Yeah, someone uh, also asked, could you use seafood in this dish? So the, tr the traditional uh, proteins for this dish are chicken, pork, beef. But you can obviously also use um, shrimp because it, there's a shrimp, there's a dish called shrimp criolla that's super similar to this. It has the same type of tomato, sofrito base, um, and they pour it over like rice or uh, mofongo. Okay, I'm gonna taste this really quick to check with seasonings and then we're gonna move on to the next recipe, which is rice. You don't have to cook the rice. Don't worry, if you didn't prepare to cook the rice, you don't have to cook the rice. I'm gonna cook the rice because I want you to see what the final dish looks like when you ascend, when you eventually eat this, because you're gonna eat this with rice. I'm gonna check the seasoning. I'm gonna check for the feet. I'm gonna check for the stuff. I'm gonna check for anything else I wanna check for. Need salt. You know what? I'm also gonna use this. This is Sazon. Uh, typically, you would use 
Goya is very available in a lot of regular supermarkets now. You don't really have to go to a specialty store for it. I don't use Goya because it has a lot of salt MSG. There's nothing wrong with MSG. MSG is delicious. It's just that I don't really eat salt like that. So I'm using my Sazon because it is salt-free. It doesn't have salt in it. I'm just going to use a little bit of that. I'm not going to go too heavy on the Sazon because it has cumin in it. And if you're a person who uses a lot of cumin, you will know that if you use too much, it can get kind of armpitty in here. I'm going to use some salt. Much more of a difference. I need mean, a little splash of olive oil. Oh, I like my briny. Okay. Now we're gonna make the rice. I'm gonna show you how to make my rice. Because rice is not rice is not rice. I'm going to put it on high heat. I'm using a traditional caldero. This is cast aluminum. If you have a fear of aluminum because of um, the things that are said about it, you don't have to use aluminum. You can use um, stainless steel, which is a great alternative. So I'm going to add a little bit of oil. I'm going to wash my rice. Add a little oil to the pot. I'm going to add the rice directly to the oil. And Ileana, I have a few people asking, uh, did you already put in the potatoes and onion? I'm sorry, Jenny. I have a few people asking, um, did you already put in the potatoes and onion? The onion goes into uh, the sofrito. Sometimes I start this with like, you know, I kind of fortify it with another onion, but you don't really need to do that because the onion is already in your sofrito. I have not added the potatoes yet because the potatoes are really going to um, thicken things up. So as soon as I get the rice like covered, I'm going to go with the potatoes. I'm going to toast this rice a little bit in the oil, making sure all the kernels are covered in the oil. So like most of the time, when I'm trying to make this dish really quick, you know, there is no reason why, you know, a lot of dishes start with uh, sauteing garlic and onions. Newsflash, the good news is that you don't really have to do that adding the water because there's onion and garlic, lots of onion and lots of garlic in your sofrito already. I'm add a little salt to the rice. Give it a good juice. And let that boil. Okay, potato is right here. I'm just using a medium sized russet. I'm not gonna peel it because I'm lazy. If you wanna peel it, you can totally 
peel it. If you don't want to peel it, use flash. You don't have to peel it. I'm going to give it a rough dice. This size, because why not? Into the bottom. I do not cut my potatoes like in uniform sizes because I want some of them to break down and stick in the sauce. I don't really like my sauce on um, the loose side. I like mine definitely on the thicker side. When my mom makes it, she makes this on the loose side. I do not. That is where she and I part ways. So you don't have to worry about fine dice, large dice, medium dice, baton, bunra. You don't need to worry about all those things because look, look the potato's going to get eaten anyway. So. I'm going to nestle those little potato cubes in the sauce as I go along, making room for some other ones. Um, if you want to use like more potatoes, like if you want to use like two russets, do it. Why not? What's the worst that could happen? All right. So the rice is boiling. I'm going to drop it to low. I'm going to cover it. I'm going to come back to it in 20 minutes. This is just um, jasmine rice. But you can use basmati, you can use calrose, which is like a medium grain. Um, short grain is like really big in Puerto Rico, which is really similar to like a bomba rice, like, you know, the arborio rice that they use for um, risotto. Very, very similar to that. But, you know, I like me a fragrant rice. So I'm using jasmine. Why? Because I can. In the winter time, which is now, if I see some like really good looking leafy greens at the farmer's market, like, you know, maybe like some Swiss chard, some red chard, some rainbow chard, sometimes some kale, sometimes some spinach. I will put it in this. That is not traditional whatsoever. But it's a great opportunity to add in some leafy greens. You know what I mean? All right, I'm going to put the lid on that. I'm going to keep an eye on this. I want to listen for it to make sure the potato doesn't do too much thickening. And if it does, you can just always add more water, more stock, and then season to taste to kind of keep that balance. Um, Now would be the perfect time for questions. Sure. Um, You've answered most of them, which is wonderful. But someone <laughs> asked, what part of Sacramento did you grow up in? I grew up in South Sacramento. Um, the closest main street intersection to where I grew up is MLK and Fur Ridge. The closest library is Colonial Heights. Oh, and someone is asking, if you add in greens, at what point would you add them? Um, you know, that depends on how you like your greens. If you like your greens, like, you know, like when you're cooking collards, if you want to cook them down to, like, mush, then you would add them around the same time that you added your um, carrots. But if you like a little snap to them, like a little bite, 
then you would add them right when the potatoes have softened, add in the greens. It all depends on how you like your greens. Oh, we've got some great questions coming in. Um, this one is from Jordan. What are you most proud of career-wise and or personal, both? Um, and then someone, Sarai, would like to know what college did you go to? Um, I went to American River. Well, I mean, I bounced around a lot. I went to um, CCSF in San Francisco. I went to ARC for... Um, Culinary school? They have a culinary program there? Is the sofrito at Chipotle similar in flavor to Puerto Rican sofrito? I have absolutely no idea because I don't eat Chipotle. Um, I don't know what it looks like. I didn't even know they had sofrito there. What is sofrito at Chipotle? Now I need to know. Um, if your sofrito looks more red, then that means it's just like... You might have used like a bigger tomato or something, which is totally cool. That's fine, but it's not um, like a cause for concern. A lot of people like when like Goya has two different types of sofrito. They have a sofrito, it's jarred, which I don't use. They have a sofrito, and then they have a recaito. Recaito is when you only use the culantro, and then the sofrito that's red is because they add like tomatoes or tomato sauce to it. Everybody, you know, sofrito is kind of like that thing that everybody has kind of like a different, every family has like a different recipe almost. Like some people you know, don't add tomatoes at all. Some people do add um, red, yellow, and orange bell peppers. Some people, I, some people add cubed ham to their sofrito. Like when a lot of, sometimes a lot of Puerto Ricans cook, they will use like a packet of sazon and a packet of like this ham flavored powdered bouillon. So adding the ham directly to the sofrito kind of mimics that, you know what I mean? So if yours is looking a little red, that's no cause for concern. It's totally okay. And so Nal is giving your uh, Instagram page a, a shout out. They said, thank you for sharing your road trips and recipes. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I added just a little bit more stock because it was getting kind of thick. So don't worry about that. Are there any Puerto Rican restaurants in Sacramento? I have no idea. I mean, there's only like um, like a handful in the Bay Area anyway. So I have no idea. Is there anything in the, excuse me, in the rice besides water and oil? Uh, no, just oil, the rice, the water, and a little bit of salt. What's your tip to cook rice so it doesn't stick no matter it always sticks okay so that has like a different there's a couple of different factors for your rice sticking it depends on the rice you're using if you're using like um like a japanese cow rose which is like a shorter grain like a sushi rice that's meant to be sticky like that jasmine and basmati are going to be less sticky but you also have to wash them because it removes the starches i mean it removes a lot of things it removes a lot of impurities and if you know how rice is grown it's grown out in um you know water patches where migratory birds um fertilize the waters 
So, and then stored in, you know, kind of like silos and stuff like that too. You want to wash your rice anyway. That will help remove the starch and will prevent the stickiness. But it also depends on the type of pot you were cooking it too. If you were cooking it in a sort of narrow high pot, like a Dutch oven, it'll have a tendency to be stickier. Whereas if you're cooking it kind of like in a stainless steel wider pot, it has more room to, this is probably going to sound stupid, but it has more room to breathe. Which is why in my book, when I tell people how to make arroz con gandules, I specifically say, if you're not going to use the traditional caldero that we use, it's probably not going to turn out the way that it's supposed to turn out. If you cook in the Dutch oven, it'll have a tendency to be really sticky, starchy, and mushy. Sofrito at Chipotle is like stir-fried bell peppers with onions. That sounds like fajita vegetables. That is confusing. No, it's definitely not that. Have you had restaurant cooking experience? Yes. Any suggestions where to buy guavas for your recipes? I use guava paste. I don't use fresh guava. So your best bet might be like at um, some of the Mexican markets, I guess. Should I be stirring the guisada at all? Yes. I mean, you know, you want to like agitate it and make sure it's not sticking to the bottom and, you know, just keep an eye on it. Fiddle with it. Where can public purchase? Where can the public purchase your entrees in Sacramento? They cannot. There is Lola's Lounge in Sacramento off Broadway. There is Lola's Lounge in Sacramento off Broadway, and there is Bodega in the pocket area. Neither of them are pure Puerto Rican, but carry many Puerto Rican items: mofongos, empanadas, and benito. Okay. I'm gonna check on the potato. They are getting soft. I like the thickness of my sauce. Okay, the chicken is cooked through. Let me check my carrots. Oh, my carrots got a little wings in there. So once your potatoes, your carrots, or to the doneness that you like. All you have to do is wait for the rice. And this dish is in. Peppers and onions. Chipotle? I don't know what you got going on over there, dude. Um, it was it wasn't a quarter of the sofrito because we made maybe like two or three cups. It was only I only added like a tablespoon and a half. And then once um the potatoes and the carrots are soft, I'm gonna add another tablespoon. Of sofrito. So somebody said that you could find culantro at 99 Ranch. Okay, so now that we're waiting for this to happen, the rice to cook, I'm just going to go ahead and like clean because I always clean as I go. So if that becomes an issue, just yell at me and say, pay attention. <laughs> Hopefully some of you all come back. 
Katie, one of the next two classes um, in February and March, right? Yeah, so February 7th and March 6th we'll be back. So hopefully some of y'all come back because you've already pretty much, we're not going to make sofrito in the next class because we will already have done that. And hopefully you come back because then you will have already done that. That's kind of like a quarter of the battle. Achieving our sauce. Here's our sauce. The sauce is nice and dip. I'm going to turn it down to low. I'm going to add another tablespoon of sofrito. Mm. And I like a tablespoon and a half. You don't need to add that much. You don't need to add that much. You can just only add a, <laughs> a tablespoon. I'm gonna mix it in. And this isn't really gonna have a chance to like cook down, but you will see kind of like a huge difference when you eat it like this compared to, you know, if when you cook it in the beginning and then it kind of just like all dissipates. It's almost like when you're making pesto. Pesto is, you you saw all the things that we just put in our sofrito. Everything was kind of like, you know, fresh herbs, fresh vegetables, fresh ingredients. It's very similar to like a pesto when you're using like fresh basil. You don't cook that. You add the pesto to the hot pasta and kind of like let it kind of cook that way, you know, more um, like a gentle kind of cook because, you know, it kind of like gives it, allows it to like bloom. It's kind of like me, I'm like doing the same approach with the sofrito, putting it towards the end of the dish. I'm gonna check the rice. Okay. I'm gonna give it a fluff. Yep, 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 yep. I'm gonna give it a taste. I'm turning the heat off. Turn the heat off on the rice. I mean, the lab's kind of like cook on indirect heat. Well, it's it's already done. The rice is already done. I'm just gonna let it get a tad more fluffier. But if you wanted to like eat it right now, you could totally eat it right now. So it's six thirty. These two things are already done. I'm gonna definitely serve it because I want you to see how it looks with the rice. Can anybody tell me how far along they are in the process? If you're finding any trouble making it. And if you also made rice, is that too many questions I would have? Well, while we wait for those responses to come in, um, Christina shared, it feels like you were right here in my kitchen cooking. It smells so awesome. You are so easygoing and have such amazing recipes. Thank you for sharing with us. Thank you. And someone else said that they are having a lot of fun. So that is so great to hear. Yay! And Wanda said, I'm finished with the pollo. I did not cook rice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, the pollo's done. Awesome. Thank you, Wanda. Is there one Puerto Rican dish that is the most nostalgic for you? We are literally cooking it right now. Like, I cook this recipe all the time. Because I cook it all the time for myself because it's the, one of the things I like to eat most. I cook it all the time and like if if I'm asked to cook Puerto Rican food because I feel like it's a good entry recipe to Puerto Rican cuisine. Like, you know, when I tell people, okay, we're going to make uh, pollo guisado. It's kind of like 
Haha, <laughs> psych. Now you have to cook three recipes, even though I told you we're cooking one. Like, you have to cook the sofrito, which is a recipe. You have to cook the guisa, which is a recipe. And I mean, you have to have rice with it because, you know, you have to have rice with it. So it's like, okay, great. But so now they've made the sofrito, and then you can use that in like literally anything. Like, you can use it in taco filling, soups, stews, braises, beef stew, chili beans, like, curries like you can use it in almost everything you know um and it took us like what like not even that long really you know what I mean so yeah if you would have used if I would have used chicken breast it would have been done a lot longer um how hard was it to write your cookbook um it wasn't hard to write the cookbook at all really because I got I wrote it over the course of like um, a couple of years, essentially, you know, like you develop the recipes like over a span of time kind of, and then, you know, you just kind of submit the collection of recipes. All right, so I'm going to serve this up. We'll do the rice first. No rice. Get out of here. And there is my one of these See how thick my sauce is? I don't really like a loose sauce. My mom does, like I said. So if you are like a person that like lacks a lot of liquid, just add a little more stock to it. You know what I mean? Like you can totally do that. So we got the potatoes, the carrots, the chicken, the olives. See? I use these fat, juicy olives. I don't even like olives, so. All of, like some of the potatoes, all the sofritos broken down, all the vegetables on the sofrito have broken down into that thick sauce with the tomatoes. Some of the carrots have broken down, some of the potatoes have broken down, and literally created the sauce for you. I'm telling you, it's crazy. And it, it's like the amount of time that this took for the, um, the amount of flavor that's in this dish, totally unfair. There have been a couple of questions about the olives. Um, a couple of people have shared that uh, people in their household don't like olives. <laughs> um, so is there anything that you suggest that you might be able to substitute for don't that? Put don't put olives in. Okay. Hey, there we go. <laughs> don't like olives? Don't put olives. You don't like carrots? Don't put carrots. You don't like potatoes? Don't put the papas. If you don't like it, don't put it. But you will be eating this with rice. If you don't like rice, you could use cauliflower rice. Yep. Yep. Yeah. For me, it's got the perfect amount of salt because I don't really eat salt like that, like I said. But also, I added a little more salt, a salty component, by adding that uh, splash of olive brine. I don't like the texture of olives, but I still use olive in this dish because the dish really needs the brininess of the olives. So if you don't like the texture of olives, just use the olive brine. But you're definitely going to need the brightness of the olives to kind of lift the recipe up because it can be a little on the deeper 
not necessarily heavy, but like the deeper side. And in this case, usually I would say if you need something bright to reach for like lemon or vinegar, but that's just not going to work in this dish. Only the olives can really replace it. You know what I mean? The carrots provide the sweetness. And you like use that tomato sauce and you've cooked it for like the last 45 minutes. So it like gets like really like deep and dark. It's good. It's hot. Oh, Christina. Yeah, you're eating it. Awesome. Yep, you can use capers. Sometimes what my grandma would do is add capers to her sofrito. It really depends on the type of mood she was in. So sometimes I'll do that. I'll use the capers and the liquid and just dump it straight into the sofrito. So, you know, while we were like blending the cilantro, the onions, the tomato, just chuck it in there with everything else and blend it up. If we're going to use bone and chicken thighs, how much longer would it take until the chicken is done? I I don't know. Until the chicken is tender, until it looks cooked through, until it's ready to eat. How many carrots did you use? I used maybe like one and a half smaller carrots, though. They were like this big. I think it's like one and a half, but you could use two. You can use three. You can use as many carrots as you want if you like carrots. If you don't like carrots, you don't have to use the carrots. Ah, oh, brandy. Awesome. Okay, cool. While I don't like kabocha squash, it was delicious in your chicken curry. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. You mentioned not being a fan of olives. I'm going to be a pair of you. Is there a substitute you use? And we just talked about that. Best way to thicken the sauce if it's too liquidy. Uh, mash up some of your potatoes. Just get your spoon, get the potato, mash it up, add it back to the sauce, and stir it around. It'll thicken it up like that. Uh, my, you can buy my books everywhere books are sold. You can buy my books at Barnes & Noble. You can buy my books on Amazon. You can buy my books at any of your... Uh, local bookstores, I would assume, in Sacramento. I don't really know any of the bookstores there that have it. Um, but, you know, call your local bookstores like Avid Reader, Times Tested, and ask them if they carry it. I'm sure that they do. We are done with her. We did rice before we started. <laughs> All right, your rice is done. Awesome. Carrots almost done. All right, cool. Awesome. Okay, so we are done with this recipe. I'm actually going to eat this. Katie, are there any questions that I missed? I've been kind of going through. I think you addressed everything. Uh, oh, someone just wrote in. Jordan said, what's been your favorite part about this whole thing <laughs> since your book has been released? Just having fun. And then a couple of people have, have asked about your spices, and I'll just note that I will put a link to where to get them uh, in the follow-up email that I send out. So keep an eye out for that. All right. And I believe that that's all of the questions. Um, We'll hang tight here in case anything else comes in. I wish I had I had a way to smell <laughs> that dish. Uh, just hearing everybody saying that their kitchens all smell so good and it looks amazing. Thank you so much, Ileana, for well, sharing all of your you great to smell it. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily we're recording it, so I will be able to cook this along later. So I'm looking forward to that. Um Get in those last minute questions, guys, if you have anything else that you wanted to share. Everyone's saying thank you. They had so much fun. Awesome. So glad to hear that. Wonderful. Great. Thank you, everyone. 
Well, we will be back on February 7th with another dish from Diasporican. So we hope yeah, to see you. Back. Yeah, come on, come on back. Let's do this again. Make another amazing dish. Um, and like I said, keep an eye out for that email. It'll have a link to the recording of this session, a participation survey, and some other goodies around all of the great programming that we're doing uh, featuring Ileana. So keep an eye out for that. And any last words from you, Ileana, before we go? Come back to the next yeah <laughs> yes <Yeah>. please <laughs> all right well thank you again Ileana, for a great night this was wonderful um thank you everybody for for tuning in and we hope to see you next month so until then on behalf of Ileana, myself and the sacramento public library thank you so much and be well <laughs>